building my own shipping container home. Join me on my journey from construction to completion of my mortgage-free home on a homestead. And so the journey begins. There have been a lot of moments in my life that, looking back, I could have never predicted. Building and living in my own shipping container home is definitely one of them. And yet, here I am, at a container depot, shopping around for shipping containers. This is actually pretty cool. Just arrived at the first. I've never really seen containers in person like this before. And uh, yeah, let's check it out. Shopping around for shipping containers is an incredibly interesting process. I mean, you see these containers everywhere. They're on highways, they're on street corners, they're in random alleyways. They're, they're everywhere. And when you finally come to the decision that you want to build your own home using one of these things, it's almost hard to believe they're just sitting there. Giant 3,000 plus dollar boxes, building blocks of your home, just waiting there for a mortgage-free home DIY project. It's a very strange feeling when you see what looks like a piece of junk sitting in some dark alleyway, yet unlike an old TV or a sofa sitting on the curb, shipping containers aren't up for grabs. Well, at least not literally, but they're definitely up for sale. Hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, millions? I mean, according to one source, there's 20 million shipping containers in the entire world, and five or six million of them are currently shipping on vessels, trucks, and trains. And yet, despite the massive numbers of steel boxes being produced, it's not like they're just lying around without an owner waiting to be claimed for free. To the contrary, shipping containers have a pretty big price tag. A completely brand new shipping container, which are known in the industry as one trip, because they're completely new except for the one trip they took from the Chinese manufacturers overseas, these will cost you about four to five thousand dollars for the 40 foot high cubes. High cube basically means that they're a little bit higher than other common models, nine feet six inches compared to the standard eight feet six inches. They're basically in perfect condition and are a wonderful foundation for a future home. Below that, you find the cargo worthy containers. These have been used pretty extensively, but are still in great condition. You'll find some dings, dents, and rust, but it should only be surface level, not structural. A quick side note, most shipping containers are made with something called core 10 steel. According to Wikipedia, Weathering or corten steel refers to the chemical composition of these steels allowing them to exhibit increased resistance to atmospheric corrosion compared to other steels. This is because the steel forms a protective layer on its surface under the influence of the weather. Indeed, when you see rust on a shipping container, don't immediately assume it's a sign of irreparable decay and structural damage. Generally, a little bit of surface rust is actually part of how Corten steel was designed to age, where the surface layer of rust actually becomes its own protective layer against the elements. Remember, these boxes were made to withstand the harsh, moist, salty conditions of overseas travel. These cargo-worthy containers are also a great, solid basis for building a home with a general cost around $2,300 for a 40-foot high cube. And so next in the industry grading system for shipping containers is what's known as WWT, which stands for Wind and Water Tight. The name says it all. These containers should be wind and water tight. No wind or water will get in, even though the inside and the outside of the containers could look extremely worn, banged up, and rusted. If you thought cargo-worthy containers looked used up, WWTs have seen way more years of use out on the ocean. Don't be surprised to see numerous patches, severe dents, and very intense rusting. Still, container homes can be built with wind and water tights, though you might find yourself spending a lot of extra time treating rust. I myself plan to build my home using these, and they generally go for about $1,700 for a 40-foot high cube. And lastly, we have the as-is category, which is 
Basically, shipping containers that are so banged up, they're considered little more than scrap metal. They are not wind and water tight, so any leaks will have to be plugged up yourself. Despite how worn these containers are, I've actually heard of container homes being built with them. One guy told me giant poles had to be brought in to pop out massive dents. A lot of extra work. If you're looking for a really low price on a container that'll require a lot of repairs, the as-is category can run as low as $1,200. So as you can probably tell, I've done my research on this whole shipping container home thing, but at some point, theory needs to become action. And so I knew that eventually, if I was actually gonna take the risk, invest tens of thousands of dollars in building a home out of one of these things, I would have to get up close and personal with an actual shipping container in real life. And this is a huge piece of advice I have. If you're on the fence and you're thinking about building your own container home, go out and find one. Touch it, feel it, smell it, whatever. Actually go experience it because that was critical for me to get a sense of the structure itself and whether or not in reality you can actually live inside one of these things. And um, so what I did was pretty simple. I just started Googling, looking for container depots in the area that I live, container yards. If you live in a city where there's a port, high likelihood there's gonna be a ton of shipping containers lying around. Luckily I live in Miami, so we got the port of Miami. These things are everywhere. So it was, it was a huge benefit. And of course, finally, I found a couple of container depot businesses, people selling them, people who manage them. And then on one fine morning, me and my dad went out. We went to go check them out. And here's what followed. This is actually pretty cool. Just arrived at the first. I've never really seen containers in person like this before. And uh, yeah, let's check it out. My first experience at a shipping container depot, meeting and talking to people who work in the industry was incredibly positive. I can't show much footage from the first company because the owner wasn't too keen on filming, but he was extremely polite, helpful, gave me a tour of the yard, and even let me walk inside of a couple containers. The experience was surreal and enlightening at the same time. Finally, after about a month of staring at these containers online, I was finally seeing them in real life in real time. And yes, I did bang my knuckles on the walls. They felt sturdy yet hollow in a strange kind of way, likely a testament to the refined engineering that's probably gone into the container designs after decades of use in transportation. So, really, really impressive. Uh, we just checked out these shipping containers and you know they look they look there you know there's a lot of new ones but there's also a lot of used ones and uh they really look great i mean so you can get you can find some that are really busted down that i've seen on the internet but a lot of these looked in pretty good condition yeah there's some rusting but you know you always there's always that difference between surface and structural rust and uh they were looking great and i have to say well, the owner guy, very, really helpful, gave a lot of information, was very forthcoming about things. So it was very, very helpful. Um, we're gonna go check out one other place. They have a bunch of containers. Uh, I don't think they exclusively sell them. I don't think that's what they do, but they might have a few lying around and they might be wanting to sell them. So, you know, just basically just shopping around for a good deal at this point. So, uh, but yeah, that was, that was really good. And so at the second container depot, I had such an incredibly positive experience that I completely forgot to film any of it. So sorry about that. So the owner of this container yard was so helpful that he opened up many containers. Uh, he walked us through his yard, let us take a look inside a couple of them. And he had a great selection, but some of them, these wind and water tights, were extremely banged up. Rusts, dents, patches rust across the hall. I mean, it, they were used and abused, but still clearly within the wind and water type category. And so despite them pretty being pretty banged up, the wind and water type containers were the ones that I was looking for. 
Um, I, that was the one that I was setting my sights on. Uh, and I told them that I was going to buy three. I, I was pretty much set my sights on three containers for the container home I want to build. And when he found out that I want to pay in cash, and he found out that I wanted to get three, he decided he wanted to give me a deal. He said he would give me three containers for $1,700 each. So each container, $1,700 for a total of $5,100 um, for all three containers, 40 foot long high cubes. And you know, that was actually perfect because $5,000 for the three containers was actually the goal I had in mind. If I can find three for 5,000 and good quality, I would be happy. And of course, in addition to that, I was hoping to buy whatever piece of land I find um, for $5,000 roughly as well. <laughs> Turns out finding land was turned out to be a, a bit of a more tedious and challenging process, though ultimately rewarding. Um, but if you guys want to hear more about how I found land without using a realtor and saved myself probably many thousands of dollars on the land, um, be sure to subscribe, click the little button down there, and hit the bell notification icon so you guys can be updated when I post future videos, including the videos I'm going to post about land. I used a bit of an unconventional method that I think ended up saving me thousands of dollars. All right, so we uh, we just left the second shipping container guy, and uh, another just really polite and helpful guy. I was surprised. That's like that's two for two that shipping container salespeople are just really helpful, really enthusiastic, and don't mind taking time out of the day to just show you around and show you what they got. You know, of course, it's also great because you get to learn so many things from people who are embedded in this industry. You know, details about the quality of a shipping container. You know, he was telling us all types of stuff about structural integrity. So yeah, uh, just uh, really insightful. It, it feels good to finally get my hands on one of these things, to feel it, to touch it, to walk inside of it. And one thing I gotta say is that a 40-foot shipping container it looks so much bigger in person. That's something I really have to say. Uh, you see it on pictures, you see it online, you see it in videos, TV shows. But 40 feet is it's big. Like it's big. Um, so uh, yeah, um, that was a really good experience, and I definitely recommend. I mean, if you're looking into this whole thing, if you have any port cities, if you live in a port city, or there's anybody selling them nearby. You can go by, talk to them, take a look around. Hopefully they're as helpful as these guys were. Um, but it's, it's definitely really a great experience to really feel these things and just see them because for me, it's a, it's a big investment if I do go through with it. So I wanna be sure before I get involved. And obviously before I can even buy any, I need permit from whatever piece of land to build one on there. So it's like you gotta, you got to go through things in steps. So first things first, I need to decide if I even want to go through with this. So that's it. Uh, that was a really, really, really good experience. And so the first step of this journey uh, was now complete. Seeing and feeling these peculiar container object things in person. The thing is, seeing a shipping container, an industrial grade object in its native environment is a far cry from seeing it as an actual working functional home. And so although my first day uh, was a great learning experience and I was left with an incredible positive first impression, I knew that I needed to take it to the next step. I needed to actually step inside of a working functioning shipping container home air conditioning, insulation, foundation, all the works. I needed to be inside of an actual shipping container, home, finished and complete, so that I could actually be like, this thing is actually gonna work. And so in episode two of Think Outside the Container, I'll be visiting a real life, fully built shipping container home, little showroom they had on display here in Miami I'll take you guys along for the journey and you'll see what that was like. So be sure to subscribe, 
and hit the bell notification icon so you can be updated when I upload the next episode. I got some other great links down there in the description, guys. I have a Patreon account if you guys would like to support my work and get some exclusive perks while you're at it. You can click right down there, support me on Patreon. And of course, last but not least, remember guys, anything is possible when you think outside the container.